allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Let the record show that all council members are present this evening. And a copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the meeting room on the west wall and is accessible to all members of the public at any time during the course of this <coughs> meeting. First item on the agenda is a proclamation, and it is my pleasure to recognize one of our service clubs uh, in Beatrice. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas Kiwanis International is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world for child, uh, improving the world one child and one community at a time, and whereas the Beatrice Kiwanis Club recognized the needs for the individuals living at the Beatrice State Developmental Center to have a place to worship and form the All Faith Chapel Board in hopes to provide such a place. And whereas the All Faith Chapel Board raised funds for 10 years, receiving donations from different individuals from across the state of Nebraska, and built the All Faiths Chapel at BSDC in 1976. And whereas the Beatrice Kiwanis Club has provided ongoing support and participation in the All Faiths Chapel ministry, and whereas the Beatrice Kiwanis Club is celebrating 40 years of service at the All Faiths Chapel at BSDC, and it is the 100-year anniversary of Kiwanis International. And whereas the city of Beatrice is proud to have a service organization like Kiwanis International in the community, volunteering and offering services to its residents. Now therefore I stand worth mayor of the city of Beatrice do congratulate the Beatrice Kiwanis Club for their years of outstanding service work in the Beatrice community and their 40 years of service at the All Faith Chapel at Beatrice State Developmental Center witness my hand on official seal of the city of Beatrice this third day of August 2015. And on hand representing the Kiwanis is Sandra Southard. Sandra? going to be the 40th anniversary celebration on August the 12th at BSDC and uh, the Honorable Governor Pete Ricketts is going to be in attendance at that uh, uh, event. Okay, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a Council member or citizen so requests. First item is item A, approve agenda as submitted. Item B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. Item C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. Item D, approval of minutes of regular meeting on July 20th, 2015 as on file in the city clerk's office. Item E, approval of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $133,917.58. Item F, approval of the Boswell report of claims in the amount of $32,599.53. And item G, refer claim of Justin Teesmeyer regarding damages sustained to his vehicle on July 17th, 2015. Is there any item that any council member wants removed from the consent agenda? Anyone from the public? Oh, I beg your pardon. Mr. Cook, item G, okay. Anyone else? 
Mr. Chairman. I move that all the items listed under the consent agenda, with the exception of item G, be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Kerr, that all items under the consent agenda be approved, with the exception of item G. Your vote, please. All right, Mr. Cook. Go ahead, sorry. Mayor, I move that the, we refer the claim of Justin Teesmeyer regarding damages sustained to his vehicle on July 17, 2015, be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by um, uh, Bob Morgan. Your vote, please. Uh, okay. uh, I'm sorry, uh, Phil. Yeah, the only reason I pulled it off, I was just wondering, is this a city ladder or was this somebody that's working maybe on the generator or something left their ladder sitting there? I believe it's a city ladder. Okay, that's all I needed. Any other discussion? Okay. We've got a motion, we have a second. Your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the acquisition of real property described as follows. <coughs> the west 100 feet of the north one half of lot 16 and the west 100 feet of all of lot 17 and block 18, uh, beg your pardon, lots 17 and 18, block 9, Riverside Park addition to the city of Beatrice, Gage County, Nebraska, commonly known as 1106 South 9th Street. Yeah, this is a property that we've talked about a couple of times. It is, uh, as indicated, 1106 South 9th Street. It's right across the street from Chautauqua Park. It's on Graybull Street as you enter into the park there. In May, when we had the first flood that came through, this house sustained a, serious, a substantial amount of damage to it. Uh, it had, I believe, approximately 18 inches of two feet of water on the living level of the, the building. The basement was completely flooded. Uh, one of the foundation walls essentially collapsed. Uh, as a result of that, and when working through the property owner to get the property cleaned up, um, we were able to strike a, a deal where the city would acquire the property for the assessed value of the real estate. And that's where you see the purchase price of $11,000. Uh, you'll note that closing is, I believe, in October. This gives the property owner some time to remove any items that they may wish to. Uh, if not, all items in the house would become uh, to the landfill as well. Questions? Rich? Have we okayed the, the, the purchase of this property? That's what you're doing tonight. Right the now. first step is the public oh, hearing. Okay. The second step is the contract to for purchase of the real estate. <clears throat> this was presented to us uh, some yeah. time ago at a work session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we know, was there Next any party? insurance collected on this after the floods? I'm not aware of any insurance that was collected on it, no. This property is hardly worth 11000 If it's on the floodplain, we have to build it up five or ten more foot. I said we use... paying that kind of money for it. We use the assessed value of the real estate. It's the, the number that's Three on the contract. Assessed. Correct. If you assess it today, it'd probably be closer to 1000 Still has a house on it. I mean, I, I don't know how the assessor does, comes up with their assessments, but... Any other comments? Anyone from the audience? Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed at 7.08 p.m. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Claybaugh, that the uh, public hearing be closed at 7.08 p.m. Your vote, please. And that is approved seven yes, and um, Ted Fairbanks is abstaining. Okay. Next item on the agenda, Resolution 5801, authorizing the purchase of real estate, commonly referred to as 1106 South 9th Street, Beatrice, Nebraska, from Virginia L. Cliff. Mayor, I move that Resolution number 5801 be passed and adopted. Second. Been moved by Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that Resolution 5801 be passed and adopted. <coughs> Discussion. As we just discussed, this is the contract to purchase the real estate that we just had in the public hearing. Rich? $11,000, that house is, all we can do with that house is just tear it off. Yep. And uh, that's probably gonna cost us, what, 2,500? Oh, to tear down the house, if you include landfill fees, 
uh, and, and whether or not there is or not any asbestos, you may be in the range between eight and ten thousand dollars. So that puts us up to twenty-one thousand dollars for this property, and we're not going to be able to sell it because it's in the in the floodplain. Nobody can build there. So what are we going to do with it? Just have uh, Pethod and mow it again? Correct. Mm -hmm. How many? How much does he have to mow as it is anyway? I can't even get my parks mowed once a month. Fifty-four acres. I. I I'm getting tired of buying property. I'm going to vote no. Okay. Any other comments? What do you got against nature, trees, flowers, <laughs> that kind of thing? What do you got against this? Any other comments from the public? All right. Gentlemen, your vote, please. And that is approved. Five to two with uh, Councilman Fairbanks abstaining. Rich Kerr votes no. Dwight Party votes no. Resolution number 5801 has been passed and adopted. Next item on the agenda is a resolution. Uh, it's resolution number 5802 establishing the final allocation for levy authority for property taxes for the airport authority for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2016. And I move that resolution number 5802 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Kerr and seconded by this end of the table. Uh, Joe Bilsbach, the resolution number 5802 be passed and adopted. Discussion. Every year, as you guys know, the airport authority has their own elected body. They come up with their own budget, but they have to come back to the city council to request that their levy be approved. And that's what you see before you. And Diana's here from the airport. I'm sure she can answer any questions about their budget that you may have. Uh, most notably, you'll see that their uh, operating request is the same as it had been uh, basically from 2009 through 2013. It's the same uh, operating tax request there. Uh, the <coughs> kind of floats around sometimes due to debt or due to valuation. Any questions? Any, do we want Diana to no, come up? No, okay. No, I don't have, you probably ask her. Did, um, is there a chance that we can once in a while get a minute, the copy of their minutes of their meetings? I mean, we see the copies of the minutes of the meetings for like the Board of Public Works and all we do. Planning and zoning and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would actually like to go to one, I, you know, want to go to one of their board meetings from time to time if I had time to do that just to keep up. But if we could get a copy of their minutes included in our stuff occasionally, that would be great, so. Don't know why you can't. It's a public record, so we'll sure. we can get it. Meet on a monthly basis, Diana, don't you? Huh? Yeah. I, uh, see, I thought uh, second Wednesday, every, I see, think. I thought they met every other month. So. Second Wednesday of each month. Okay. Yeah. If that'd be good, then we. Yeah, if we could include that in the packet, that'd be great. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, Bob? Not really a question. I just think you know, over the years they've done a very good job of being very financially responsible, and I think it's good to see that. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone from the public? All right, gentlemen, you vote, please. And that passes 8-0. Resolution number 5802 has been passed and adopted. Thank you, Diana. Next item on the agenda is a resolution number 5803, amending the Interlocal Cooperation Act Agreement with Gage County to provide funding and detailed duties for the position of the Southeast Nebraska 911 Center Director. Here I move that resolution number 5803 be passed and adopted. <clears throat> Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that resolution number 5803 be passed and adopted. And discussion. Chief Lang, you want to talk about the contract? Just um, briefly, the uh, when we put together the Southeast Nebraska Regional Dispatch Center, uh, we hired a director. At the time, uh, the county indicated a will or a desire to have that person help them with their uh, communications needs in the county. Uh, our obligations per contract is just for uh, those uh, pieces of equipment that are here in Beatrice or that transmit the signals 
those pieces that receive the signal or field units other than Beatrice, fire and rescue and police uh, are the county's responsibility for the most part. Um, they've asked, uh, they've had some trouble because they don't have uh, uh, expertise in that area and asked if we would consider um, having this person assist them. Uh, we were fortunate to hire Chris Moore, who not only was a good director, but has extensive knowledge with radio systems. And so uh, he's gonna be able to help um, mesh all of this together. And for that, they will pay uh, a portion of his salary. That's it, That's it. Um, Just a few of the highlights. It's a one-year contract and they state that they'll pay 20, the county will pay us $20,000. Right. And then that'll get rolled into next year's contract. It'll just be one big contract, I'm sure. And how did we determine the 20%? What happened? Was it? Best guess. Best. Best guess. We don't know exactly what the time will be. We haven't done this before. So we had to just kind of uh, calculate what we thought it would take and make a, make a stab at it. Wish I had more <laughs> deliberate answers. Gotcha. That's it. But you're, you're not basing it on increased calls or decreased calls? Nothing to do with any of that. It's simply sure. his uh, time that we think it's going to take to, like, for example, just things he's found already is that many of the fire and rescue departments, paging uh, pagers that they carry and system, radio systems that they have are out of tune, and it makes them so they don't have trouble receiving or understanding the pages, and we battle that. and. And he has the ability actually to reprogram those things with some software that we that we have. So okay. it'd be good for everybody. Wait. We hired him full time. Does he have enough time on the scheduling and to do these sort of things? Twenty percent more. We think so. Again, I mean, this is all new. Um, right now, he's a busy guy because we're drafting policies. We meet once a week with all the the players that are a part of this, uh, both Crete and, and all of Gage County, Wymore, and us. Um, and we're writing policies and getting getting the you know the nuts and bolts kind of put together of how it's going to function. Um, so he's a busy guy, but by the same token, I think he'll be able to as uh, kind of gets his handle on things. I think he'll be able to do that. We'll see. We'll know. We'll know. And you know, we'll be able to adjust that in a year. So we'll, we'll know a lot more. Any other questions? Anybody from the audience? Thank you. All right, gentlemen. I'd ask for your vote, please. Then. That passes 8-0. Resolution number 5803 has been passed and adopted. There are no ordinances. Next item is the public forum. Purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. Uh, no discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Anyone for the, uh, here for the public forum? Uh, anything first from the council, from the audience? Rich. Yes, sir. Um, we ran into a problem uh, last week, and our street department handled it for us. But I just want to remind the public that if you have ditches with no curb and gutter, here a few years ago we, we voted that the city will not be taking care and mowing those ditches. It is up to the public to handle their own ditches. So we did it last week. Uh, because of the rain and stuff and it got away from people, but uh, we are in the process of, of widening, widening out those ditches. Uh, we, we had a problem here a few years ago where we went too deep, but it is the public's responsibility to take care of those ditches. We've got them down to where they can take care of them now and uh, hopefully they will we'll do that because it was a, a big mess. But I just wanted to remind the public that we are not uh, to take care of those uh, ditches. That is their responsibility. Okay, Rich, thank you. Anybody else? Tobias, anything for discussions or reports? No, nothing. Okay, that brings us to the end of our agenda. I will remind everyone that we will have um, our next meeting uh, two weeks from tonight, which will be August the 17th, and then we'll have a work session on August 24th, both of them in the same meeting room. We're also going to have a work session on the 31st of August. And we're going to have a work session on the 31st of August. Okay. So we've got a lot of work to put in, huh? That's right. Okay, perfect. All right. With that, we're going to go into executive session. Mr. Catlin? I move that we go into executive session at 7.18 p.m. for the 
protection of public interest to discuss real estate and contract negotiations. Second. Been moved by Catlin, seconded by Kerr, that we go into an executive session at 7.18 p.m. Uh, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. All right.